you're a professional athlete, and it seems like most professional athletes, to be a professional athlete, I think you have to be laser focused on what you're doing there. Yeah. And not that you're not laser focused in your career, but I was really interested to find out from friends of mine that you've got this hobby, which uh, real estate investing, and then why is that? That seems to be rare for a professional athlete, I would think. Mm -hmm. Why? For me, it was always uh, financially motivated. I, I wanted to, when I'm done with my playing career, to not have to work. Yeah. So I always saw real estate as a vehicle or a tool uh, to achieve that financial freedom. Yeah. And I got positive reinforcement from that, from, from, from doing deals when I was younger and doing deals now and uh, from understanding the business and, and learning. And, and that's why I'm doing it. Are you weird in the locker of that? Or does your team even know? You no, know, my, my teammates know. I, uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to, to hide it uh, or shy away from it. I, I, I think that. And if if teammates ever have questions about real estate, uh, they, they know where to come for sure. Um, I think it, it definitely makes me different um, because you know, I'm, I'm thinking about those things. You know, I, uh, it's a different lifestyle for me than a lot of guys. So I would say a lot of guys when they're done playing, training in the morning, um, you know, they're they're you know maybe going home to relax or uh, you know, play video games or play golf or you know, be recreational, do something like that. It's what I enjoy most is, is going home and, and uh, finding deals, and, you know, doing real estate and growing my business. Tell me about your first deal in 2005. What did that look like? Sure, yeah, that was uh, back in the, the, the wild heydays of you know, free money from the mortgage industry and uh, the, the first deal we did uh, was I did with with uh, a good friend of mine, and it was uh, a, re, uh, a rehab project, um, actually buy and hold, and ARV was probably two seventy five. Um, we were able to buy a house for two twenty five. Did an eighty fifteen, so we only put down five percent, and uh, we had a first and second mortgage, and uh, then we. Put in about twenty thousand dollars working the house, and we just ended up living it from uh, from that point on. And and uh, my business partner and friend uh, ended up living it in it until he moved out, and I actually moved out six months after we, we did the, the work. So I actually was uh, uh, was a landlord for many years for the house. Rental property, then. So you was turning rental property. All of your deals since then. Have they been buying holds? Uh, yes. So I've yet to do a fix and flip. Um, my comfort zone right now is is, is buying holds. Uh, I, I have ten doors right now: triplex, uh, single family with a mother-in-law, uh, and uh, the rest are single family homes. And you're extremely busy, especially during the season. Who manages those? Do you manage your wife? So I manage I manage uh, five of those doors, and I've got a property manager for the other five. Any RSL fans that are tenants? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, they put two or two together. Wait a second. Yes, okay. yes, and yeah, yes and no. I, I've got uh, uh, in my triplex actually. There's uh, uh, a Mexican family that lives there, and uh, two of the, the best tenants I, I've ever had. And they didn't know from the start that I was a professional soccer player, but uh, they finally put two and two together. I'm not sure how, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I went over there, uh, you know, um, after they found out, and you know, I. Sat down just to talk to him for a little bit. And, about uh, landlord, yeah, about, about your relationship as a tenant. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. You know, and just checking in, and, and uh, man, I, I uh, they talked my ear out for for a good hour, and we we're talking soccer, we we're talking Mexican soccer, we we're talking, uh, you know, Mexican. Uh, we we're talking about tequila. I mean, every everything, everything from every, every topic you can think of. So, yeah, but it's been great. You know, I, I, my tenants um, who, who do know are, are you know, I, I don't have any issues with them. And, been, you know, landlording has been easy so far. Yeah. So what are your goals in real estate? As far as your buying goals go, do you want them to be at a certain level when you retire? Is that kind of a short-term goal? Yeah, so I want to have 25 doors by the time I'm done playing soccer. And um, from those doors, I, I, I'm going to have, I would like to have a minimum cash flow uh, of uh, $5,000 a month. Nice. So that, that way you can live and not have to do anything. Exactly. Live, yeah. live, uh, be able to, to pay my expenses, uh, you know, and have my business. And, you know, but that doesn't mean I, I, I want to stop working. It yeah. just means that I want to be able to, to have options to, to, to make, you know, choices that are, you know, 
um, hampered by any financial issues. Yeah, interesting. You'd be out of the rat race at that point. Right. Do whatever you want. I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's that's really cool. interesting. Yeah, just like yourself. Yeah, I, I think you'd be able to do that. I hope so. Well, I know you'd be able to do that actually, just from your your goal oriented guy from high school to obviously making a professional soccer player to, to getting 10 doors down. Yeah. That brings me to that question. So tell me about your, your normal daily routine. Wake up, what's your routine, what do you do? Sure. What does that look like? Sure. Everything starts here about 9.30 on the massage table, you know, seeing the guys, training sessions from about 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, come back, lifting weights, um, eating food, hanging out with my teammates, and then, you know, probably about uh, 2, 2.30, I get started with my real estate stuff. And, you know, whether it's making phone calls or, you know, reading about, you know, some sort of new way to creatively finance a, a deal, um, uh, or, you know, meeting with, you know, somebody like Andy McFarland, you know, and learning from them. Ah, shit. Yeah, I know. Uh, and, and then, then after that, you know, it's uh, you know, I like to have dinner with my wife. Um, I like to be home for that. And then after that, uh, you know, we're talking. Where are we at now? Six thirty-seven. You know, maybe make more phone calls, going to a seminar, um, going to Saria, uh, something like that. So it's uh, you know, by the time I'm in bed, you know, nine thirty, ten, I've had a pretty full day. Yeah, ten o'clock, man. Um, are you a big reader? Yes. What do you read? What are you reading right now? Uh, so, books so books? I'm rereading uh, a, a, a couple books right now. Millionaire Next Door. Ah, it's one of my book. favorite books of all yeah, time. Inspirational. And, yeah, and, and uh, I'll, I, I'm getting more things out of it than I, I got before. You know, just uh, for example, you know, uh, how, how how millionaires pay so much uh, less in taxes. Yeah, it's your biggest yeah. expense. It's taxes right. are your biggest expense. Exactly. And uh, it just kind of seemed like how people with these, you know, who have know millions of dollars in assets you know are only receiving an actual you know income whether it's you know, uh, mostly if it's passive they're only receiving maybe eighty thousand dollars you know in annual income and they're only paying maybe you know fifteen percent taxes and it's like you know how, how, how is this possible people obviously they don't understand you know the nuances of the tax code but uh, I think it's really interesting yeah what are your non-negotiables in your day is there anything that do you say every day, no matter what, I have to do this? Do you have anything like that in your life? I have to work out. I have to have FaceTime with my wife. I have to eat well. <clears throat> I like to be organized. So I would say there's a whole lot of spont spontaneity in my life, uh, but I'm okay with that. Have you ever read The Seven Habits of uh, fat people. Yeah, I actually just just got done uh, reading that in the off season, and uh, you know, just from an organizing standpoint, uh, Stephen Covey talks about having roles and basically organizing your week based on your roles. You know, like I said before, like as a husband, as a father, uh, as a real estate investor, as a professional athlete, uh, you know, if um, you know anything else in your life that's important, you know, you, or, you organize based off of those rules so that you don't have those those other things in your life that are distracting you. I've heard that the wealthier people are, the more they think into the future. Sure. So, sure. But yeah. most people that are not, that don't have much financially, they think real reactive, real short term. Oh, I got my bill today. I got this and that. How am I going to pay that? Right. 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 Exactly. And I think that's what's, what's uh, so amazing about real estate is it it's not uh, something that you can just do for a couple months and then just quit. Okay, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm, I'm move on to something else. You know, it's something that you you it almost forces you to be long term about yeah. it because you know you can become a fix and flipper, and obviously get in, get out of the game, you know, as often as you want. But then there's there's obviously tax consequences to that, as you know. Absolutely. But you know, as a as a long term, you know, my my niche is you know is creative financing, buy and hold properties. And I'm thinking, you know, not just about uh, today, tomorrow, next week, next year, I'm thinking, you know, you know, 10 to 15 to 30 years down the road about, you know, where, where I'm gonna be situated and, and, you know, what properties I'm buying. So I think that's really important. Yeah, extremely. That's a big differentiation too, because you make your money, W2 money as a professional athlete. And I look at this and say, as a real estate investor, real estate entrepreneur, wholesaling and fixing and flipping, that's just a high, 
W2 wage or it can be a high wage. But on the other side of that, I still have my buy and holds, I still do some loans through self directed IRAs and things like that. That's the distinction people think oh, you're a real estate investor, a flipper and a wholesaler. They're not really an investor, right? That's my job. Right. But the other side, sure. I'm just like you, I've got a high paying job, but I still have to shift my focus sometimes and be like, I get taxed to death on that, just like you get taxed on your income. Yep. So it's just shifting it to the other side. That's exactly. an interesting differentiation. If you could go back and whisper in, young Nat's ear at 17 or 18 years old. Any advice for yourself, what would you say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I have a few pieces of advice. The first would be don't buy that condo downtown in Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a learning experience. It was, it was. I, I definitely learned from that one. Uh, bought it in 2008 and um, you know, for 262, one bed, one bath. Um, didn't think about the cash flow, didn't think about the exit strategy. Bought it because it was nice and I wanted a place to live. Mm. Fast forward down now. Now it's 2014, and uh, you know negative cash flow is $600 a month. Alligator, they call them. Exactly. Financial it's, alligator. It's, it's, it's eating my cash flow. <laughs> so uh, that would be one. You know, uh, to, to always have an exit strategy, uh, especially with real estate. Yeah. What uh, else would you whisper in young Nats here? Uh, definitely would have bought more. Uh, bought, bought more real estate. Uh, really? In the in the recessionary times, I uh, um, wasn't as active uh, as I am now. Um, and uh, you know, I, I would have bought on the way down. I would have bought on the way back up. And uh, you know, Bill Bronchuk, I went to his seminar. Um, uh, He's a Colorado guy. Colorado guy, too. Colorado guy yeah. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorite real estate guys. And you know, he, he said, he said, you know, you don't time the market. He said, you know, it's just like a, um, you know, a, a monthly investment, if you will. You know, you buy, you know, you buy on the way when the market's going down. You buy when the market's going up. Um, you know, there's always a there's always t a, a, good, a good time to buy uh, if you make the right deal. So that really impressed me. Yeah, that brings up another question. Then. Why are you successful? I would say I, I'm more motivated than the average person. I, I, I'm very competitive, and I just enjoy working. And I enjoy working with people, and I enjoy building relationships and working for myself. But at the end of the day, I think it comes down to that kind of fire that I think a lot of, of people who are successful have. I was actually watching, I love these 30 for 30 um, series that ESPN has going on. Yeah. And uh, I remember one uh, with Mike Krzyzewski, and he, he just talks about, I, I always wondered how a guy like that was able to, every single year, coach at such a high level and keep his team so motivated. For him to have that kind of drive, because he's won championships, he's already won, you know, he's been coach of the year, uh, you know, he's, he's coached the Olympics. Yeah, Olympics teams. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, he's been so successful, but he says, he says without fail, every single week, every single month, every single year, you have to pay your dues, you have to sacrifice in the preparation for your job. Hmm. And I thought that was, that was right, because every year, for me, I, I can't come into this job and without the, the right preparation, physically or mentally, uh, because if I do, you know, I, my, my game suffers. And, um, and every year, it's, it's, it actually gets harder yeah. to do it. There's more to do uh, from the mental side of things to more to do from the physical side of things. I think that's, a, that's just a phenomenal tip. Always be improving, because if you're not improving, you're declining. Mm -hmm. And, and it's a sacrifice. I think sacri it, it is a sacrifice. Thing that do what people aren't willing to do. Exactly. Which is why you're, which is why you're successful financially off the field. You're successful on the field. You, you've done things that people aren't willing to do. Hey, if you liked what you just saw in that video and you like what we're doing here at I Love Real Estate Stories, please leave us a comment on this video or subscribe to the YouTube channel so that we can keep giving you quality content.